Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. This is Madden 18 on EA Sports. Confidence is never a question when it comes to wide receivers, and these two are no different. It's Landry's Dolphins going up against Wallace's Ravens. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, we are coming to you from the heart of Baltimore, nestled between Russell Street and I-395. We're at M&T Bank Stadium. There's a scene a short time ago. The Ravens introduced to this sellout crowd and through a sea of pyrotechnics, out they came from the tunnel. We're set to go as the Ravens get ready to match up with the Miami Dolphins. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So we get ready to see Baltimore's offense. This is a Baltimore crew led by that man, Joe Flacco, who dipped below 500 to three and four with their losses last week against Minnesota. And Flacco, he was well under 100 yards until the fourth quarter. And it's been like that all season for Joe Flacco and the offense of Baltimore. They are really predicated on having a strong running game and letting him throw off a play action to accumulate numbers. Well, they're leading Russia at 30 yards in the game. All right, so when that happens, that means he's just got to stand back and fling it, and that doesn't work well for their offense. As you mentioned, three and four, lost some ground to the Steelers in the AFC North. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And here now, the Baltimore offense. This organization's identity for years has been its defense, but if you take a closer look at the offense in 2016, better than you might think. 17th overall, 12th in passing. They're looking to take the next step now to becoming a top 10 offense in the NFL. They keep it on the ground, Allen again. And he'll get this one up to the 26. One yard, the official pick up there, so it's going to set up third and nine. And a look at the starters for the Miami defense. In 2016, Miami was 29th overall in total defense. Not a number that's going to excite them or one that they can hang their hat on. But what redeemed them last year was their third down defense. Fourth best in the NFL. And as we all know, that's the down that you really point to and target get off the field on third down. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Flacco from the gun. Underneath to Allen. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that, bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. Oh, pressure comes, and the Dolphins block it. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. And he will score. Touchdown, Miami. Partners, you well know, every block punt wasn't necessarily a called block. Sometimes the guy just finds his way back there. Doesn't matter. The play happens, and that one turned into six points because they handled it so well after the block. Now Andrew Frank's on for the point after. Ah. 
Footing likely going to be an issue all night here on a rainy night, but this one is good. Franks now on to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. And now here come the Ravens. He'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well. But when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him. And some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. Flacco. Rush gets home. Down he goes. And now Flacco. You see him there. They can ill afford to lose him, but he's slow to get up. We'll check on his status when we get back. third down a nickel formation here defensively so Flacco is out getting looked at on the sideline and in his place comes the backup and that's Ryan Mallett on play action they'll throw oh the pressure too great and he goes down once more Cameron Wake he's the one to get in this time and back-to-back -back sacks are going to bring up a fourth down well, they went with the nickel. They throw in an extra defensive back. Coverage was very good. Yeah, it was exactly as you would expect. A passing down. You bring in the nickel package. Just as you described, the coverage was excellent and allowed one of their linemen to end up getting to the quarterback. Here's Sam Cook now. And remember, he had his first punt blocked. Now, fair catch is called for and taken at the, we'll call it the 37-yard line. The Miami Dolphins, they will be led by 33-year-old Matt Moore, who led them to a come-from-behind victory against the New York Jets last week after Jay Cutler went down with the injury. It was a good look for him. Two touchdowns late in the game to get the win. The ultimate backup understands his role, stays ready for when the possibility presents itself, and then produces. That's how it gets done. And when I talk with people who were at the game, they said there was a definite sense that the energy level went up when Matt Moore came into the game, and then they proved it and paid it off with a victory. Now it's 
It's the Boise State alum, Jay Ajayi. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. A glance at Miami's starting 11 on offense, and the Dolphins collectively, Charles, four and two, and you've got a pretty good stat on that, right? Okay, this, this one blows me away, but it's true. The first team since 1970, I repeat, 1970, to have a winning record while being ranked last in these three categories. Yards per game, 243 yards per game. 155 passing yards per game and just 12 points per game. <laughs> Last in every one of those categories, yet they have a winning record and are seeking a division title. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. Ajayi last year, 1,272 yards, third most in a single season in Dolphin history. And he helped transform Miami into a playoff team in 2016. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. More now. And that is incomplete. He was trying to hit Thomas that time, and now it's second down. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. When talking about the Ravens' defense, it's pretty easy to take them for granted, isn't it? The traditionally a top-10 defense. But if you take a closer look at the numbers in 2016, that might surprise you about how good they were during the season. Fifth against the run, ninth against the pass, seventh overall. Once again, the Baltimore Ravens, one of the better defenses in the NFL. Second down here after the incomplete pass. Here's Moore, throwing again. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. From the gun, Moore. And he finds Julius Thomas. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. And a big third down conversion with a gain of 28. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. And now the offense operates in the red zone. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get that one to Kenny Stills. And it's second down. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They run with a Jai. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Here we go now. Off the play fake. More. It's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. Well, he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to.
Now it's Andrew Franks on for Miami. And Frank's kick is good. And that will make it 10-0 here in the first. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point. So no problems converting there. So his big play capability in full display there as he's able to return that punt for a touchdown. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And he'll take it out to the 25. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And this is their third drive right now. Maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. They start the drive with a give to Allen. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. Now I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. They stay on the ground with Allen. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll make it third down. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the tackle. Dolphins bring on an extra defensive back on third down. Fake to Allen. Here's Flacco. That is caught. It's Perriman. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. With Steve Smith retiring, someone's got to fill the void as the number one receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. And Brashad Perriman going into his third year, this needs to be his time. First round pick, of course, missed all of his rookie year with a knee injury, 33 catches last year. He has the ability, now he has to just go out and do it. First and 10 here for Flacco. And some room to roam now. And he'll slide down to avoid the contact. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. So the offense has it first and 10. Flacco gives to Allen, and he'll take this one down to about the 40. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see, second and nine. From the gun, Flacco. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he gets it down to the 32. 
Give him eight on the play, and that'll bring up a third and one. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. The Ravens on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Now a carry for Lorenzo Taliaferro. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to look deep for Perriman. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly, just sending a guy downfield with the in route accompanying it, what people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. They'll run with Allen, and he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks. He only got a couple on that one, so not a ton of help. They'll have a third and eight forthcoming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? In search of eight yards on third down. They've already converted two of these on this drive, two for two. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Cameron Wake with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It'll be a 51-yard attempt. It's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. And this score will stay right where it is. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yeah, and in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. Well, it's no secret. That's why they have him return punts. He has the capability to take him back, and he did so there. Out comes the Miami offensive unit now. They get set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Let's go. Move, There's a handoff to Ajayi to begin the drive. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it in every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Moore from the gun, he'll throw out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Five yards on the pickup, and that's going to lead to a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Oh. 
They get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. Now more. He went backwards five yards there on third down to break up fourth. In his third year now, here's the punter, Matt Darr, to kick this away as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And before the punt, time is going to run out on this first quarter. 10-zip our score. We're back to Baltimore after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back now with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Dolphins in possession of the football. They are, however, facing a fourth down situation. So on fourth down, here's Matt Darr to kick it away. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Let's put our attention here now on the Dolphins' defense. And they've created a major first-half storyline with the pressure they've been able to create. And I know that the good teams adjust from series to series. They make their adjustments on the sideline before they go back out. In this case, I think they might need a little bit more time. They want to get to the half and start figuring out how do they change protections, how do they get the ball out of the hands of the passer a lot quicker, make sure he doesn't get hit as often, all those different things. Maybe even run the ball a little bit more. Anything to try and tamp down the pressure. Starts with a run by Allen. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, a big hit at the 17-yard line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be a third and about 13. Good luck trying to get your running game going against Ndamukong Sue. I mean, he is so strong. Just trying to move him, take one guy, two guys, whatever. I wish you a whole lot of luck. He usually converts an offensive running game into rubble. The Ravens on third down. Two for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Here's Flacco. He's got his man. That's Wallace. And he's got daylight. It's a foot race. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mike Wallace, 83 yards. And the Ravens have cut it to within a score. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions, and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown.
Justin Tucker for the extra point. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now out to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Out comes the Dolphin offense now as they get set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. They'll start out on the ground with a giant. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again, go play action, hit them over the top. They stay on the ground. Again, it's a Ajayi. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Well, add that play to his resume reel because he went to the Pro Bowl last year. That's how you go to the Pro Bowl. You make plays like that, big-time penetration, and throw people for losses. The Dolphins on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. Let's go. Boom, it. Boom. More now, operating from the gun. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. Chris Wormley coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Here's Matt Dar now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Now a late flag comes in as they got him down via the face mask, and that'll give him even better starting position. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Takes it across midfield to the 45. 
He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down, Flacco to throw to Allen on the dump off. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. They go play action here on first down. And it's hauled in by Ben Watson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. back to the 29. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Here we go with second and seven. Now Flacco. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. Jordan Phillips busting through to get him for a loss of six. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Flacco and the Ravens now, after the sack, need something good here on third and long. Passing play, Flacco. Looking left side, that's caught by Macklin. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here and just load up for it and see what happens.
a carry for Allen. And a short pickup there down to about the nine. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle, keep coming after them, put the pressure on them. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him right around four on the carry. We'll see if they want to keep pounding here on third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This offense so far on third down, they've hit four of seven. This is third and goal. Flacco looks to throw. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. time and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. started all even as the kicks away this will be taken to the back of the end zone and from back there a wise move he'll just sit on this one and it'll come out to the 25 the Dolphins offense now working their way back onto the field and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to punt from deep inside their own territory which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule what they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now more. Off play action. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. to throw on second down. And he's going to go down again. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches, and when they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards it's third and very long operating from the gun Moore under pressure again and down he goes again 
the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Matt Darr now as he's on to punt for Miami. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Returnable here from the 38. 51 yards on the punt there, and the Ravens will take over. And the Ravens taking the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Bash, <laughs> Super toe. <laughs> And to give this time to the tailback. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We're back to Baltimore after this. When halftime rolls around in just a bit, we'll send you to Orlando. You will hear the dulcet tones of Mr. Larry Ridley with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Does dulcet mean good? Yeah, it's just something that broadcasters say. It's got to be good, right? It's got to be you good. You tell me. Well, it's got to be good if Larry's doing it. Break from the ground game here. Flacco. And Watson has it right side. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. The Ravens on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and three. Here's Flacco. And he's got his man. That's Macklin. 23 yards on the play. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down.
The red zone first down for Flacco. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Watson. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. more it's Flacco and this is complete it's Allen three yards is the gain that time second and goal in order for a screen pass to break big a lot of things have to come together and be well executed but all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game They go pass again with Flacco. Got a man, it's caught for a Ravens touchdown. Mike Wallace, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Ravens have taken the lead. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front and now see on the sideline special teams defense scrambling saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter Tucker now for the extra point he's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10 so that drive goes eight plays and it's capped off by the Baltimore score Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So now here come the Dolphins. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Here's Moore, throwing on first down. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over, and we'll see what they come up with here on this next play.
looking to throw on second down. Moore, they set up the screen to Ajayi. And now running right through it. A gain of 32 that time. It's hard to play in the NFL now as a running back and not catch the football as well. Jay Ajayi shows what you can do when you have both of those skills. Good in space, isn't he? He really is able to catch the ball, and he helps create blocks downfield. A lot of times that's, a, that's what people miss. It's not just making other guys miss you. It's setting up guys to block those guys downfield with the moves you make, and Jay Ajayi does that very well. down and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack now whistles come in we're going to get a timeout here by the offense as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime so the offense took the timeout looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action Stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards it's third and very long now more off the play fake going deep here for Landry well this is taken in it's complete give him 35 yards there on the third down conversion So we're at halftime here in the Inner Harbor with the hometown Ravens on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Okay, Brandon, thanks. And welcome, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get to the highlights. The Ravens are happy to be sitting in the locker room with the lead. The Dolphins didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. So here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. We go to the second. It's Flacco hooking up with his big play receiver, Mike Wallace. And this two-play drive goes for a touchdown. Ravens now down by just three. Now to late in the first half, Flacco's on point with the throw. After the short pass, he'll score. That takes the lead up to seven. Still late in the first half, Mosley's gonna push his way to the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. From here in Orlando. Let's turn it back over to Brandon and Charles in Baltimore.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Let's field it a few yards into the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. They'll begin the drive with a Ajayi. Takes this up just short of the 30, but he was able to avoid that earlier tackle. Nice move. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. To throw is more. To throw on second down. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Dolphins on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Let's go. From the gun, Moore. And he's got his man. That's Landry. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. A really good pickup of 28 yards. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Just a yard in the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. You know that old expression, it's not my night? It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Here's more from the gun on third down. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback, the ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Here's Matt Dar now. He's been terrific so far. Oh. 
And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. And how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some <laughs> gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. First down, Flacco finds his man, Watson over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. Fresh set of downs here. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Really tough drive, but that run help salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back. And now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Second down following the run. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's brought down. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, put a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. This is Talia Farrell, and he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Yeah, and that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss. Second down. And a little floater there is incomplete. Macklin, the man he was looking for, and now it's third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot, but they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. Oh, incomplete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it, just move on to the next play. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. So this will be spotted on the midfield logo. It's a 58-yard attempt. And this won't get there. Won't be on line either. It's no good. Off to the right, and this score will stay right where it is. 
So it's a rare two-miss ball game for him now. Normally one of the more dependable guys you're going to find around. Very unlike him. One of the better kickers in the NFL. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him physically or mechanically. He's just having one of those games. The Dolphins' offense now heads back on the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. Off play action. Moore. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And they do finally get him, but he makes it all the way to the six. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. So the chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from the six. More now. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. That's the second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. Second and goal. Here's Ajayi. And this carry terminated at the eight-yard line. Good stick skill showing the power, but just not much room to operate. It's a solid pickup, eight yards, but work still to do now on third and goal. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. A big play to start the drive got him in this position, but this defense has held firm since, and now it's third and goal. Here we go now. Blue ah! They'll try to run it in. It's Williams. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Only able to pick up a yard, and that's going to leave him with a long fourth and goal. Another stop on third down, and this defense still hasn't allowed a touchdown to this point. Now it's Andrew Franks on for Miami. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And Frank's kick is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. So the drive takes him inside the 10, but it ends with just three. And a nice job defensively to rise up and make sure they didn't get in. Now it's Franks following the made field goal to send it away. The return man, Chris Moore. 
And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, Less of a field goal attempt for him. And to give this time to the tailback. He takes this for three to the 29. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Now it's second and seven. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit on half of them, five for ten. They're looking at third and a few inches. Flacco. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. But when you hit him on the move like that, he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam. Oh, boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Fake to Allen. Here's Flacco. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. The tight end, Max Williams, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. And down inside the 35, he goes to the 32-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? The Ravens on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Again, they run with Tally Farrow. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Sue in there to get him for his second sack of the night. 
the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start offense. And that'll set them back five. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is knocked down from the side at the 41-yard line. Only a yard on the gain there as time will run out on this third quarter of play. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Ravens in control of the football. They've also got the lead as we get set for the fourth. Ninth play of the drive now on third and a country mile. From the gun, Flacco. That is caught. It's Perriman. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. And now a first down following that long game. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he takes this down to about the 12 for a gain of three. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Now a handoff here to his running back. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Now it's Taliaferro. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane.
Five yards to go for the offense. First down and goal from that five-yard line. Carry it's Talia Farrow. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three yard line. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line. Because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. They come out here in the eye. Second down, Flacco now. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. They'll run. This is Allen. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. Only a yard that time, so now a decision to be made here on fourth and goal. There are certain drives in a game where anything less than a touchdown that caps it feels like an absolute disappointment. This is one of those drives. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This is less than an extra point, just a 19-yard attempt. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So, Charles, I think from a defensive perspective, you have to look at that field goal there and consider it a win. You were able to keep them within a touchdown, so no question about it. That was the kind of stand that keeps you in ball games. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Come on, Alex. Green, 39. Green, More on first and 10. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. Devontae Parker, the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Second down following the incompletion. More now to throw again. And his throw is incomplete. The tight end Julius Thomas, the intended target. And that takes us from second to third down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Dolphins on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and ten. Now more from the gun, he'll throw. And he hits his target, it's Kenny Stills. And he's able to get up here to the 26. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, 
but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. This is taken at the 15. A big boot that time. 57 yards, the official distance. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now Joe Flacco and the offense heading back out onto the field. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and ten. Nice run on second and ten when probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. And three full yards here for the offense to get on third down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you. And others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. Here's Sam Cook now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. <laughs> A big kick that time, 52 yards. And it'll be Dolphin football. Jarvis Landry and company heading back onto the field now. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Play fake here on first down. And he'll go out of bounds across the 35-yard line. 18 big yards on that one and a Miami first. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and, of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Well, the offense lining up first and ten. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. To throw is more. Operating from the gun. 
toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Kenny Stills, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. Well, not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. The play fake. Moore. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Chris Wormley in there to drop it for his second sack now here tonight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This will be third and a mile. Here's more. Off play action. He's going to look deep now for Landry. Oh, he can't hang on to it. Almost intercepted. They would have loved the first pick of the game there, but at least it does get him to fourth down. I guess they're in a situation now, fourth quarter, where they're forced to take some chances, but I don't know that that was the type of a chance you want to take. And that one could very easily have been intercepted, and if it does get picked off, that could possibly seal this one. Here's Matt Dar now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. <laughs> Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. And now here's a carry heading left. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play there. Second down. Brandon's is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Flacco fakes the give, sets the throw. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Fielded at the 20. 
We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And out come the Dolphins now. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. First down, Moore. And he's going to be brought down here in the backfield. Tyus Bowser in there to get him for his second sack of the night. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Second down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Here we go now. Blue More now. From the gun, he'll throw. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Terrell Suggs in there to get him again. The third time he sacked him here tonight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Matt Dar now as he's on to punt for Miami. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And take it right on the 30. They'll call that a punt of 59 yards. Tough to do better than that. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Getting late here in the fourth, and if this team has any chance to win this football game, their defense obviously needs a stop here. They go play action here on first down. Open man left side is Wallace complete. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Mike Wallace, 63 yards. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. And this is obviously quite a performance. And most of the time when we talk about someone putting a team on their back, I think we're talking about a, a guy who runs the football. In this case, it's a guy out wide catching it, and he's done exactly that, truly leading his team right now towards victory. Three touchdown catches. He's been the headliner. Now Tucker to add the PAT. 
and the lead is up to 14. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go now. Three, two, three. Now more. Throwing on first down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jay Ajayi there out of the backfield. And now it's second down. A little too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. To throw is more. Going to throw again. He throws and he hits the slant route to Thomas. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Let's see what the defense dials up here. Third and four. Operating from the gun. Moore. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked off by the longtime charger, Eric Weddle. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Some things you just accept as fact in the NFL. And one that is true, the Baltimore Ravens are going to attack you on defense and create turnovers and takeaways. Their secondary had 18 interceptions in 2016. That was tied for the most in the league. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, to see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Now the Dolphins are going to halt the action here. It's a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So a defensive timeout. Chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action.
second and five. Now a handoff as they run left side. And he goes nowhere. He'll lose yardage back at the 17. Now the Dolphins are going to take another timeout here. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. This one deep right side. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. is the putter Cook who sends it away. Fielded at the 33. Now on the return. Oh no, the ball is loose. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And they will set up shop in enemy territory at the 42-yard line. All right, zero rooting interest in it, but that would hurt. Well, yeah, you're losing in the fourth quarter. A bad time for a fumble on a punt return. They had an opportunity. All right, they were sensing. They're down on the scoreboard, and now they just gave that one up. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. And he'll give it here to his running back. And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down around the 37. Calling a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave him with a third and about five. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who, who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. To an egos Flacco, and that should be it. Now Justin Tucker. He has hit from 61 in his career, so he has the leg for this. This to make it a three-score game late. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. 
Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice, got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Ravens are victorious here as we say so long from Baltimore.